Yeah, we're going to give everybody time to get in. This is the Electric Coast Channel, and I welcome you. And we're going to talk uh, basis. This this is a continuation from the uh, last uh, base talk that we did uh, about two weeks ago. <clears throat> Gonna give everybody time to get in. We're starting off late today.
Welcome everyone, welcome. This is the Electric Coast Channel. <clears throat> We're at the game table right now while we wait for everybody to get in. And uh, once we get enough people, we'll go ahead and get it started. Yeah, I know we're starting off a little late. I try to I try to get in here by nine, but it just wasn't happening today. Hey, what's up, coach? How you doing? Yeah, we just had like a small hiccup here. I think YouTube is dropping bits over here. All right. <clears throat> yeah, what's up, coach? Yeah, what's up, Trey Porter? How are you? <clears throat> okay, so we're trying to stay trying to stay on board here. YouTube just dropped our video, our video feed. So you're on the game table, trying to wait for some more people to come in. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Yeah, we're looking. If we're looking kind of grainy, if your video is not as is not as sharp as it should be, I'm sending it out in 1080p. Uh, if YouTube is buffering my video, it's nothing I can do. All right? So we're going to do the best we can. Okay, Trey, good to hear. Good to hear. All right. Going to switch around a little bit. Make sure we have all of our inputs. Make sure everything is showing up as it should. Yeah, we're going on about 14 minutes now. Going to give people time to come in. All right. All the inputs are good. We'll go back to the game table.
we're about at 16 minutes. Let me give some more time. Good to have you here, Trey. Good to have you here.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and get it started. We're going to get on over to the game table now. Um, Make one more adjustment here. One more adjustment before we come on. Alright, back in that. Okay. <clears throat> so, a couple of weeks ago we were tweaking on this base right here. And what I did was I deliberately let the base sit for a while. And we're going to monitor the progress of this base. I haven't done anything else to this base until today, this video. When you saw me using these plies right here, I touched on the prongs a little bit. But since then, nothing else has been done to this base. And also, I got some pictures I wanted to show you of uh, some other bases and how they contact the surface of the board. Um, so, what we're going to do right real quick, we're going to run this base. We're going to monitor it's uh it's movement all right <clears throat> so again glad glad to have you here trey so here we go it's got a really good get off and i've used the coffee mug warmer the lighter hot pliers and cold pliers on this base Still more that I can do, and I'm going to show you that in this uh, live uh, video today. All right. So the base, it turns a little bit to the right. So naturally, the base is showing us tendencies to perhaps be a looper. But with a little bit of prong adjustment, the base has gone further up the board, all right? So what you want, you want to align your prongs as sharply as you can. You know, you don't want your prongs walking. I like to say, I like to, say, I, I like to use the word, the term walking. Where you got one prong up here and one prong back like that. You want your prongs aligned. And you want them, and when you curl them, you want that curl to be the same on each prong. Okay, I'm trying to use my fingers here. These, these two fingers right here. All right. You don't want your base, you don't want your prongs doing that or this. You want those prongs as aligned as you possibly can get them and that will incur and that will get the most out of your base all right and you want your prongs to be as straight as you can because i talked a little bit i talked also in the last video about when you use your pliers you don't want your hands twisted a slight twist will cause your base to turn you want that you want the wrist and your pliers in line all right so when you press down your prongs you're not twisting the prong all right now if you want to twist your prongs to get that turn to get your base to turn that's okay all right okay so again with more alignment we'll be able to get this base to run straight as it did the last time so so what i'm gonna do we're gonna go over to the uh to the uh to our pictures i want to show you a few things all right i want to show you a few things um there's some uh you know things one must consider when you're tweaking let me get in position here so i gotta go from the from the desktop from the, from the game table over to the desktop <clears throat> 
Let's see. Give me a moment here. And my telestrator did not come up. Right. What do you know? Computer's asking for an update. All right. Let's go to our. I want to pull up my telestrator. I would have had this up before I started, but I didn't even look at the screen. It's automatically assumed. I take for granted my my applications are going to start when they're supposed to. <clears throat> Now, if it doesn't, because I want to draw. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back over to the game table. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this. I'm going to reboot this. I had to reboot this desktop real quick before, uh, before I show you this picture. So, in the meantime, stand by.
stand by, stand by. Um, wait for this update to go through. I wanted to show you this desktop. Um, besides, we want to give more people time to come in. So just bear with us. Bear with us here. Okay, this update is taking a little bit longer than what I thought. So, we're still going to go over to the, we can still look at these pictures, all right? But, um, it's, this update is going a little bit longer than what I thought. I didn't catch it when I booted the machine up before I started the production. So, we're going to still work at the uh, game table here. And we're going to, uh, as you already know, we're working with this base right here, right? So, in electric football, it's always work to do. It's always bases to tweak. You know, it's always figures to paint. What have you. So, what we're going to do today is... I'm going to go get... I'm going to grab one of these... Uh, okay. That little mishap there. Let's grab one of these uh, Formula 24 bases from ITZ. And we're going to work on one of these while we wait for this update to... Uh, finish you know I didn't even warm up the coffee mug warmer because normally I would have that running before I come into a production okay so here we have 
a Formula 24 base from ITZ. And let's do this. I'm going to put these two bases side by side. And give me a moment here. I want to drop the camera a little bit. I'm going to put the bases here. And we're going to zoom in. I want you to get a close up. of these two bases now you notice one is green and the other one is like an aqua type of greenish blue you know ITZ make their bases in different colors alright they got black they got white blue what have you but the texture of these bases is different this Formula 24 base is softer See how I can twist it? This Formula 55 base is a little more stiff. Okay? So, what's supposed to happen usually, your softer bases have more grip on the board than your harder bases. So, your Formula 37 bases, your Formula 24 bases are your, your softer plastic bases among uh, the ITZ collection if you will or ITZ brand alright so I got my coffee mug warmer always at the table so we put that right there see it's always at the table I just didn't have it turned on so I'm gonna turn it on now cause uh this update is taking longer than what I expected but that's alright we gonna we're going to keep on going. Because here on Electric Coast Channel, EF is what I is what I do. All right. So we're going to back our camera up. And we're going to fire up this coffee mug warmer. Let that get warm. Now, as we did in the previous video, we tweaked on this base right here, right? And we used our Haiti Repro defensive back figure as the as the uh, the mon as the uh, model to run on that base. So we're gonna get another figure, and we're gonna put the base that we tweaked on this guy, so we don't lose him. But we're not going to lose anyway, but we know that he's right here. All right? Yeah, that update's taking a minute. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this base, and we're going to mount it on our figure. And this is going to be a recap, pretty much, folks. So for all the guys who missed the last video, they'll get a recap here in this one. And we're going to talk about tweaking a, a Formula 24 base. And then what I always do when I pull a base out the pack, this is how they label them. It could, these are the blitz bases, by the way. Before I put any plier or any tool on the base, I set it and I observe it. I just want to run it, see what it does. You see that? It's choppy, it's bouncy, and it just runs in a loop. Which, by the way, in the early days of the game, this is what people expected from the game. When they saw figures do this, run erratic like that, that's what most people outside the hobby think the game is. Okay? That's another story in itself. All right. So, what we learned throughout our time in the hobby from the, you know, for myself, I came up playing the game in the early 80s, late, late 70s, early 80s, right? And what we learned over the decades, we learned how to take a brand new base out the pack 
and make it perform better. And that's what tweaking is. That's what it does. Okay. All right. And that's what this video is. That's what this video is about. So now, got my base here. We test ran the base. And we saw how choppy the base ran. How slow and, you know, underperforming. Very pedestrian. All right. So, I like to use my Zern pliers. Uh, my slim duckbill pliers. Um, also have a uh, needle nose. And for these uh, for these uh, new bliss bases, this little that dial in there is kind of loose. Got a small wrench here. Also a pair of uh, guitar tuning pliers. Now, some of you outside the hobby are, you know, probably like, you know, wow, why so many tools for such a small item? Well, to fine-tune this bass, if you will, you need these tools. You need the tools I just showed you right here, along with cigarette lighter and the coffee mug warmer that I showed you earlier. I normally would have a camera sitting over there, but. Um, again, I have plans on doing something else, so, all right, and this computer is still, still updating, so, should be done rebooting in a moment. Anyway, so those are some of the tools that you're going to use when you tweak. So, I have here my Zern pliers, they're very fine, very these pliers, they really they get a, a detailed bite, if you will, a very good bite on the prongs. So for these bases that's got these individual prongs, like this Formula 24 base or even this Formula 55, this style of base has got these individual prongs, you want yourself a good pair of Zern pliers, all right? So... What I like to do, I like to start on the back prongs. Okay? So I take my, my Zern pliers and I grab a prong. All right? And I smash down on it. And I go all the way down. I, I cover the length of the prong. All right? Now, you don't need to go all the way down into the base where the prong connects to the shell of the base all right you don't have to do that because you want some type of you want the prong to still be rigid on that portion of the base because that's where the structure is all right so you want to go to each prong and press each prong using your Zern pliers all right, because what we're doing here is we're conditioning this base. We're making this base more responsive, all right, for when the board turns on, okay? I'm going to do these prongs, all right? We're going to do the next one. And these are the back prongs. Take our pliers and we're just going to go down the prong and keep smashing on them. Now this Formula 24 prong, because it's softer, softer plastic, you'll see that you'll actually feel the prong bouncing as you squeeze on it with your pliers. All right? <clears throat> Now, I said in the previous video, you have, I want you to think of your prongs. I want you to think of the sides of your prongs like teeth. You have a tongue side and a lip side, right? Inside here, inside this part of the base in here, that's your, that's like your tongue side. 
All right? And then the part of the prong that's closest to the sh outside the shell up here, that's the lip side. And if you flip the base, it's the back of the base, right? This side of the prong is the lip side. All right? So you saw me hold the base like this, right? Showing you the tongue side. And I had my pliers inside like this, right? Now I'm going to flip the base over. I'm still doing the back prongs. I want my, my pliers to now press on the lip side of the prong. Try to keep my hands as best in the camera as I can. All right. And you do each prong like this. All right. So that's this. So now, and I'm take my fingers and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sweep the prongs backwards like that. Because what you want to do, you want to encourage, you want to get those prongs to sweep back. All right. And I'll show you that picture momentarily once uh, my desktop finishes booting here. Still taking a while. So now I've pressed on the back prongs. And each time I do a tweak, right, with each, each time I work on a group of prongs, and for me, I usually start with the back prongs, right? After I'm done doing both the lip, the, the, the uh, tongue and lip side of the prong, I test the base. All right? Let's run it. It did a perfect loop, and it was a little bit faster. And while I was handling the base a moment ago, my pliers went along the edge here and it bit the uh, side of the prong there. But it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. All right. So we worked a little bit on those back prongs. I got my coffee mug warmer running. And the base has a little bit better get off just by pressing on those back prongs. Haven't touched the front prongs yet. Okay, haven't applied any heat. Coffee mug warmer is still warming. All right, so now I'm gonna go to these front prongs real quick. And what I like to do I like to take the prong, I like to take the dial out of the shell. Okay? Because these are the, the back prongs are attached to the shell of the base, and the dial has the front prongs attached. Alright? So what I like to do is by taking the dial out of the shell. I now can get at these prongs a lot better. So again, we're going to do both sides of the prong. The lip side and the tongue side. Stand by for a moment. I got to press the power button on this desktop because this needs help. I got to manually reboot it now. Give me a moment. All right. Let's get back to our base. So now, we're going to press on the lip side of the prong. 
And the reason why you want to do both sides is because the press, your 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 press is different on your thumb than it is on your fingers. Most of your pressing is going to come from up here. All right. Now with these 424 bases, you gotta really be careful how much how much you lean on these prongs because this 424 plastic is very soft. And you have to be mindful of how much heat you apply to this 424 base. Alright, because the plastic is so soft. Alright? It's bubblegum soft. And one way you can tell when you drop the bass. It has a different sound when you drop it. And, and notice how it bounces. See that? Yeah, but let's get this Formula 55 bass while I'm here. Let's drop this. It's got a little bounce on it. But at any rate, the Formula 24 base is softer than the Formula 55. So now we're going to flip the base over. And we're going to do the tongue side. And as you can see right here, computer still coming up. 87% complete with the updates. All right. So then we're going to work on the tongue side of these prongs. Okay. Got two more to do here. And all I'm doing, I'm not really biting down the prongs. Because when I tweak, my approach to tweaking, I go, I go slow. And I observe what the bass is doing with each, with each thing that I do to the prongs. See? So that way when the bass starts to act funny, it acts erratic. I know right off the break what I did or what I failed, what I or what I did or didn't do or failed to do. And I know how to make the adjustments. See? Okay. So I did the prongs on the on the dial and the prongs on the shell. <clears throat> And since we're here, with these blitz bases, right, this little tab right here, or a little, little, a little uh, notch right here is where the dial rides on, right here, see? And when you put the dial in, the dial's little, it's kind of loose. So, to help tighten that dial up, I have these two pliers right here. All right? Let's move them over some. <clears throat> My guitar tuning pliers have plastic, they have plastic jaws because we don't want to tear up the bass when we press with them. And I have this uh, pair of, of, of this uh, mini wrench right here. All right. I use these pliers to press down on this little notch right here to make it spread so it'll grab the dial when the when the dial sits inside the base. All right. At 100% complete. 
It's almost finished. You know, I want to keep you guys engaged. You know, so. <clears throat> so now, what I do is take the wrench. Got to open it up a little bit. Because you got to put it on your base like that. See? And what we're going to do, we're going to spread, we're going to smash. We're going to smash that notch in there to make it expand. All right? Got to find the right setting on this. On these pliers. Alright, that's not it. Alright, go ahead and back it all the way in. Alright. So now with the pliers, as you can see, I'm gonna bite down. Just like that. Alright. And I'm going to go on this side. I'm going to flip the base around. And I'm going to go on the other side. And you'll see that dial. You might can't see it in the camera. But you'll see the dial. is spreading. And that little notch is spreading a little bit. Right? We're going to go around the front. Or off to the side. So you want to be careful not to press down too hard on this. This is the uh, retaining hook that grabs the uh, the stand of your figure, okay? So you want to make sure you don't damage that. So you go off a little bit. Off to the side like so. So it's not too... Get my fingers out of the way. You don't want to damage that hook right there. All right? You want to bite down on it, make it spread, and you want to do this on the other side. Like that. Spread it out. And then if it's a little bit too tight, let's say you go to put let's say you go in to, to grab your dial and you're ready to mount the dial inside the base, right? And let's say the spread that you caused on this tip right here is too much. Just take your pliers and squeeze it back in a little bit. See? So you want to bite down on it, make it spread out. I'm off camera right now doing it a little bit more to make sure I got it perfect. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put our dial back into the sh into the shell of the base. Make sure it's mounted, and now it's tight. Got a tighter feel, all right. And we also want to make sure the dial is well seated. And while we have the base here, using our fingers, we want to align the prongs, right? And then if you want to get that, you want to fine tune your alignment using your needle and those pliers. You grab each prong and you set them. You curl them. Use your pliers like this here. To position those prongs. You're doing everything cold. No heat yet. Alright. <clears throat> Go to the back prongs. Do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Set the figure on the base. Let's run them. Still looping. Not a problem. 
because we're still early in this tweak. All right. Run it again. All right, and you see it's looping, right? But it's it's a good thing and a bad thing. Why? Because it's good because it's looping a lot smoother than what it was when we first got the bass out of the pack. All right, it's a bad thing because the bass is just is we just started tweaking it, and it's showing me looping already. So before we put heat on it, we gotta get our corrections. And um, let me um, got to look at one more thing with this desktop because my Telestrator is not showing up. So uh, let's do this. I'm put you here and I'll be right back. Okay, 
we're back. Got our pictures up. And we have our telestrator. Right? So, we're at the game table looking at this former 24 base, right? And the last time we ran it, it was looping. But guess what? It's running, it's, it's fast. It's a little faster. No heat. But we're going to save this for right now. We're going to get over to this, uh, over to these pictures that I wanted to show you. And, uh, we're going to discuss this. Because that's what this video was about in the first place. We'll save that Formula 24 base for another video. All right. So now, we're at the desktop. And we're going to look at some photos. Now, in the last video, there was uh, someone asked a question about over tweaking a base. And at the time, I didn't have the picture um, set up. I didn't have it ready. But now I do. And what I want to show you real quick is what an over tweaked base looks like. Now, if you look at these prongs right here in the back of the base, all right, you see how they're smashed all the way down. The plastic is so thinned out that the, the figure is the figure will cause that part of the base to collapse. Also, you'll look at the tips of the prongs and you'll see the tips are pointed. They're pointed, uneven, they're not stable. That's what a that's what an over tweaked base looks like. Alright. Excuse me. Um here's the same figure, same base. And there it is. You look closely, and you'll see. So we can blow it up a little bit. Yeah, it's better. You'll see the prongs are are just in bad shape. So the coach who tweaked that base, he put he bit down so so hard on his pliers that he smashed all the way through the plastic, and pretty much he rendered that base useless. Now, some may ask, can that be fixed? It probably can, but in most cases, when you do that to a base, it's pretty much done. You've, um, you've, uh, the plastic has been ruined. All right. Bring that back to normal. Let's blow this one up. Yeah. That's a good look right there. Now you see how how smashed the prongs are. That's what you don't want to do to a base. All right. Close it back. Now you see now if you look at the front prong right here. You see how he's got a crease. Let's make a smaller circle right there. There's a crease on that prong. See, that happened because too much pressure was applied to one spot on the prong. This base is a shining example of what you don't want to do to a base when you tweak. All right. Let's clear that. Okay. Now, going back to the Formula 55 base, the one that we tweaked a couple of weeks ago, right? The other things I wanted to show you about the base. Here. Now, this is the Formula 55 base, a side view. 
Now, you can see how the prongs touch the board. What you're looking at right now is the base and, 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 and it contacting the surface of the board. Okay? Let's move to another picture. And here's a rear image. And you see right here the rear prongs the lip side of the rear prongs that's another picture I didn't want to do that not that one but again the rear of the base let's get back to where we're supposed to be here that's where we were alright you see the rear prongs contacting the bore surface all the prongs, if you notice, all the prongs, the, the, the tips of the prongs are smooth and they're even. All right? That's how you want your base to contact the board. Here's a side view of another base, another ITZ base. That's a Formula 37. And remember earlier in the video, I talked about different colors of bases that uh, ITZ has. This is another color. And you see the this is the front prong here and over here that's the back prong showing you shown from the side of the base okay and here's that same base rear prongs alright now you notice how the prongs again all are touching the board surface all right they could be the prongs could be a lot sharper in in the rear here but that base does perform pretty well does perform well <clears throat> let's clear this ink I got more I want to show you okay let's open up this one now here you're looking at the Formula 55 base that we tweaked two weeks ago. It's the same base. And I have it mounted on the uh, the ITZ trimming tool. I forget the, uh, the exact name of it. But this tool, we're going to go up to the game table. And I'm going to show that to you. Um, this tool is used for trimming the tips of the prongs of your base all right and the tool has different thicknesses like if you look at the you look at how this white portion right here is that right there is uh i believe that's one that's two millimeters thick so that there are different thicknesses on this tool so you have a 1.5 millimeter or 2 millimeter or 2.5 and 3 millimeter and I got I have some other pictures here I'm going to show you in a moment but when you put the you set the base on this uh, trimming tool it exposes the tips of the prongs that you want to trim all right let me clear this ink while I'm the next picture all right, let me see. We got that's the base. Okay, here's the trimming tool again. And that's a different thickness right there. Now, this is the same trimming tool. Notice more of the prong is exposed. That's the 1.5 uh setting right there, okay? Um I'm going to show you the tool in a moment once we go back to the game table. Now, on this particular base, I wouldn't clip that much prong, all right? That's too much prong for, that, for this particular base, all right? So my intention, that right there is, that's 2.5 right there. That's 2.5 millimeters. And this is 2. 2.5, yeah. This setting is a two is a is a two millimeter setting. 
All right, that's a little bit too much also. I don't want to clip that much. I want to clip that much. All right. Um, the little red uh, holder, if you will, or plates, if you will, that's the clamp I use to hold the base and the uh, trimmer. Excuse me. It's getting late, 12 midnight. But it's a holiday weekend, so I'm, I'm good. All right. This right here, those red plates right there, or clamps, if you will, is the clamp that I use to hold the base inside the trimmer. All right. And the tool that I'm going to use, that I intend to use, that's going to uh, trim the base. Got to find my picture here. I know I have it. Right here. Here's an image of a straight edge toenail clipper. All right. I'm going to show you in a moment. Once we go over to the table. This toenail clipper is what you're going to use to trim those. Uh, prong tips when using the uh, the trimmer all right so now make sure we got everything here make sure we covered everything here all right so we already talked about what an over tweaked base looks like right we talked about that right I want you to etch that in your mind right there I want this to be a constant reminder to you of what not to do to a base. I want you to remember that. All right. The coach who tweaked their base was overzealous. All right. And when you do that, that's the outcome. All right. You chew up your base. Okay. We're going to close this minimize that right okay so we talked about base contact all right so let's go back over to the uh, game table and we're going to look at this trimmer Looks like you're the only person here, Trey. The view's going up, but you're the only one talking. You're the only one here. Okay. <clears throat> so now, this is the tool, the trimming tool, if you will, that you saw in the picture. And this was the clamp that I used to hold the base onto the tool, all right? So this is my other clamp. I took the uh, red shoe off because I need these the red shoe out of the way when I go to uh, press down, when I go to clamp down on the base all right so using that and the straight edge nail clippers this is our former 24 base that we started tweaking while we were waiting for the desktop to come up we're going to set this base off to the side we're going to save this base for a different video isn't that, isn't that amazing? I could do a video on just one base. That's why, I did this. see this game is very robust. It's very rich. One base for one class. All right? So, I'm gonna take my base and I'm going to set it on 
the let's move it up a little bit there I'm, I'm gonna set it on the 2.5 millimeter trimmer right here and you see the slots right there you put the prongs inside those slots and the prongs protrude on the other side of the trimmer all right that's what you want to do now when I trim the prongs on my base I always trim the front prongs first right so let's make sure we got let's make sure we understand this the way I do it, when I first start tweaking, I tweak the back prongs first, right? Then I tweak the front prongs. Now, when I go to trim prongs, right? I trim the front prongs first, run the base and see what it does. And then possibly I may trim the back prongs. The outcome of the base what you what you intend to do with the base is going to determine how much you how much you tweak on that base okay all your tweaking techniques what you intend to do with the base is going to be determined well how you tweak the base is going to be determined by how you intend to use the base so when you so when you trim your prongs when you trim the front, you want your base to have a jacked up appearance. You don't want that base to be low in the back and high in the front. You never want that. All right. So you either want the base jacked up with the back of the base a little higher than the front of the base. Or you want the prongs even from front to back where the base is set parallel where the base is set parallel to the board all right so let me know if you didn't get that let me know if you didn't understand what I said there all right so now I'm gonna get my uh, my trimmer here and I'm going to put the base on the trimmer this is the 2.5 millimeter all right also when you do this it the, this trimmer it gives you it allows you to see how even your prongs are before you even start to clip them all right now the camera you can't see the tips of the prong the tips of the prongs protruding on the other side of this trimmer. Alright? But they're there. And what I'm getting is this side right here the prongs on this side are a little bit shorter than the prongs on this side so this is this right here is a teachable moment because before we go to trim you gotta make sure you got enough prong exposed on the other side of this trimmer before you start cutting because one thing's for sure once you cut once you cut your base you melt or you cut anything there's no coming back you're fully committed all right now I know that these prongs are a little bit shorter on this side these ones on this side are shorter than the other ones on this side <laughs> right okay so what, what I'm going to do before I trim I'm going to put this down we're going to set this off to the side we'll move up move 
our clippers here and we're going to address we go we're going to address this issue right now before we go trimming on things all right so what we're going to do what i like to do what my sop is i want to make sure the shortness is not because of the curl because sometimes remember how i was telling you earlier about curling your prongs if you put too much curl on one prong over another then that curl can possibly shorten your prongs right so what i'm going to do i'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to grab these prongs and I'm going to roll them back the other way. I'm going to roll the curl toward the lip side of the base, okay? And I'm going to do the other prongs too. I'm going to curl them back. Because what I want to do, I want to get these prongs back straight again. Right? To, to measure how much shorter or longer the prong is compared to the prongs next to them, all right? Because remember, when we first, back two weeks ago when we tweaked the base, we put the heat on the base, right? And one more tip. When you pass your lighter over the base, the side that you come from first gets the heat first so you gotta be careful not to stay too long because then you'll melt one side and not the other so if you go from from this side to this side this side is going to get the bait because it's going to get the heat first and if you go from this side the same thing this side can get it first it's going to get the heat first all right, so you can, by doing that, you can shorten your prongs on one side, making them shorter on one side than the other side. So you got to be careful of that. All right. Okay, so we're going on an hour and a half now. So let's get our tool back and we're going to look at that reverse curl that we put back on these front prongs. And we're going to check to see if we got any, uh, check the length of these prongs again. So I'm just going to hold it with my hands. Yeah. So this side is still... This side right here is still a little bit shorter than the other side. All right. So upon seeing that, I'm not in a hurry to trim those prongs yet. You see? Because what we don't want to do, if you trim this side, right thinking you're gonna make it equal to this side you could possibly change the performance of the base for the worse let's change the tape right now i could keep the length of the prongs as they are let's put our curl back on here let's get our pliers clean those pliers and let's curl these prongs back toward the tongue side. All right. Get that curl back in there. Got to reestablish that. Because what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to have to do something offline for this base.
Okay, we got our movement back. All right. So by curling the prongs back to the tongue side, we we reestablish our movement. Okay. So no, I'm not going to use this trimmer on this base just yet. Still some more troubleshooting that I got to do before I start cutting things. All right. I'm going to use this as a teachable moment. If you come to a place with me, if you come to a place in your tweak where you're not sure that if you cut or melt something, stop. You heard that here. The electric coach is telling you. If you could, you got your base at a, at a place where you're not sure what's going to happen. If you cut or melt something on that base, stop tweaking. Because you don't want to go back to, you don't want to be that picture that I showed you earlier. All right? You first use your cold pliers to make adjustments, to curl, to straighten, to flatten in an effort to get that base to baseline. When I say baseline, I mean I'm talking about a a norm a normal standard once you get that base to to a baseline where it's it's functioning as it should and in this case this base is doing just that we have good movement it's not running erratic and we don't have strength yet but we have movement that's the most important thing in this hobby base movement until you get your base settled down and moving as it should, then you'll be able to approach the base in a way where you it will greatly reduce the chances of you ruining that base or part of that base. In this case, this is a dial base. So if I tore up the dial, I can just get a dial from a different base and reinstall it and retweak it. But we don't want to tear up our bases. We don't want to ruin our things, right? We want our guys to play. Okay? So, what I'm going to do here is we're going to adjourn for the night. Because we're at, what, 12 midnight? 12, 18? All right. And Trey, thank you for uh, for coming on, man. Um, So, we're going to hold up here. And we're going to come back. We're gonna come back because we still because now we got another base we gotta look at the Formula 24 ITZ base all right and I also want to show you what I did I clipped the side I didn't clip it but I pressed down the side of the prong and I'm gonna I have to get a, a close up image of that and I want to share that with you in the uh, in another video so for now I'm Mo. Thanks for watching.